Hey guys and welcome. If you recall back to my video where I was assembling my ASUS TUF X570 Plus motherboard, one of the things I noticed was that uh, the two M.2 slots, one came with a heatsink and one didn't. And in particular on that motherboard, uh, the M.2 slot closest to the CPU slot did not have a heatsink, but the lower M.2 slot by the chipset did. So what I've done is I've taken a look at the other ASUS motherboards in the X570 line and there are a couple different heatsink configurations for those M.2 slots starting with the absolute cheapest board the X570P um, there are no heatsinks at all the second configuration is the one that I have on the TUF X570 Plus which is the lower M.2 slot has a heatsink and the CPU uh, one closer to the CPU doesn't and that configuration is also shared with the X570P Pro and the X570 ACE workstation board which actually has it reversed and the uh, M.2 slide by the CPU socket has the heatsink and the lower one by the chipset does not. When we get up to some of the more expensive boards like the uh, ROG boards, the Strix uh, E and F boards and as well as the Crosshair, um, all of those come with heatsinks for both the upper and lower M.2 slots. So the question is does having both drives have a heat sink really matter or not? So as you can see up here I've got my uh, crystal disk info launched and uh, my drive C and my drive H. Uh, these are my two NVMe drives. Um, C is in the CPU M.2 slot or the one closest to CPU uh, and the H drive is the one in the lower M.2 slot by the chipset. So as you can see here uh, after idling for quite a while um, <coughs> The NVMe drive in the lower M.2 slot with the heatsink is idling about 36C and the one uh, by the CPU in the prime first M.2 slot is idling about 5 degrees higher at 41C. So now we, I'll go ahead and start running a crystal disk mark on both of these guys and uh, we'll see how those temperatures change. So during the crystal disk mark runs, we saw the Samsung SSD, which is in the uh, primary M.2 slot without a heatsink, get up to 71C while doing its read tests and 77C while doing the write tests. Uh, on the other hand, the uh, Silicon Power P34A80 uh, SSD, which did have a heatsink in the secondary M.2 slot, only got up to 42C during the read tests and 48C during the writes. Now both of these drives are rated for 70 at which the controller will start throttling the performance um, and the critical temperature uh, for these drives is 90 C so without a heatsink we're already surpassing that um, and it's winter right now so you know ambient temps aren't all that high so in the summer I would expect it to be even worse so it looks like you definitely will want to put a heatsink on the drive that doesn't come with one natively so I'm going to go ahead and do that now and let's see how that changes the performance afterwards. So here is my Samsung 970 Evo uh, M2, M.2 SSD and the heatsink kit that I bought off of uh, Amazon. And this kit actually includes heatsinks for two drives, but they use different attachment methods. So the one I have out here over here that I'm going to use is going to uh, clamp on both sides of the drive and secure with screws, but they also include this other one over here which is single sided and attaches to the drive via these elastic bands. I'm not so sure how well elastic bands will hold up over time, so I'm just going to go ahead and only use the screwed uh, clamshell heatsink. So here's the drive, thermal pads, and heatsink all uh, laid out. And um, we're only going to be using the longer and more slender uh, thermal pads. This one is obviously too wide to fit in there. And this one is for if you were to use the rubber band method. So with these guys, um, the pink pad is going to go on the bottom of here first. So you'll place this in there before you place the drive in. And this only has a plastic backing on one side, the sticky side. This pink side is supposed to be up and there's no additional um, uh, plastic over it. So here I've put the first thermal pad in the bottom of the heatsink and you'll notice that I avoided this cutout over here because that has to stay open for your screw. Um, now that that is in, we can go ahead and drop the drive itself onto uh, the heatsink base. And once again, we will slide things over so that the cutouts align.
And then we can go ahead and take the upper heat sink and, or upper thermal pad. I'm going to go ahead and take the plastic off of the, that and then place that on top of the drive. Now that the upper thermal pad is on, I can go ahead and take the top piece and drop it in. And there are uh, tabs on the end that uh, will help you align it. And once that's on, then we can go ahead and just press it together. Uh, give it a good press. And uh, while you're holding that together, then you can go ahead and start screwing these together. Now the heatsink comes with its own screwdriver, but I'm just going to use my own along with a Phillips triple zero head and uh, screw in these screws on the side. Now that the heat sink and drive are all together, let's go back and pop it in the computer and see how it performs. So here we are again, and the uh, NVMe drive in slot one has the heat sink. Um, looking at our crystal disk info, uh, it looks like we still have a 5C delta between the uh, upper and lower slots, the lower slot having the uh, ASUS heatsink on it and the upper slot, uh, the primary, having the Amazon heatsink. So let's go ahead and run tests and see if we see any improvement. So looking at the results after putting a heatsink on the drive in slot one, um, very significant improvement in temperature. Uh, during the read benchmark tests, the uh, drive got up to 51C, and then uh, the drive in slot 2 got up to 40C. And in the write test, the drive with the new Amazon heatsink got up to 56C, and the uh, other drive got up to 46C. So the drive in slot 1 now with the Amazon heatsink, nowhere near 70C or above. So we're now in the very safe zone and uh, it seems like it is a well worth upgrade to add a heatsink to your drive that does not have one natively.